But as you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God for this day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. The psalmist said, I was so glad. There's something about coming into the house of the Lord that makes you glad. There's something about the house of the Lord that makes you happy in the Lord. The old folk used to say, is there peace in the house of the Lord? There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's family in the house of the Lord. There's brothers and sisters in the house of the Lord. And so we are grateful to God for your being here today in the house of the Lord. Now you must invite Jesus, his presence, his spirit to come into this place. Though the Holy Spirit is everywhere, he indwells each of us. And so the spirit of God is on the inside of you. And so you want God to fill you up so we can all praise God together. Pray for the church today. Pray for our season. Ramadan is the season for the Muslim. Easter is the season for the Christians. And we want to celebrate our Christian holiday as high and holy as the Muslim celebrate their particular day. Pray for our choir. Pray for our musicians. Pray for our ushers. Pray for our ministers, our staff, and all the persons who are around you. And I guarantee you, we will feel the fire of the Holy Spirit coming into this place. We're going to invite Pastor Dan to come now and lead us into a word of thanks unto God even now and to talk to us. Amen. Let us all pray together. Let us all bow our heads all around the sanctuary and go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Father, Lord. We thank you for another day, Lord, yet in the land of the living, Lord. Another day, Lord, that you have blessed us with. This is the day that you have made, Father, Lord. And we've come here to rejoice and be glad in it, Father, Lord. We are grateful people, Father, Lord. Grateful to be in your presence this morning, Father, Lord. Grateful to be in the house, your house, Father, Lord, today, Lord. We're going to lift up your name and praise you like never before, Lord. We're grateful and thankful for the faithful people of God that have come here today. Come here today to honor you, Father, Lord. We know that you honor those who honor you, Lord. Needless to say, Lord, we know that you have blessings and great things in store for their future, Father, Lord. We ask you today, Lord, to come into this place, Lord. We want to feel your power, Lord. We want to feel your presence, Lord. We want to hear a life-changing word today, Father, Lord, from you, Father, Lord. So we just ask you, Father, to come into this place and have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Move in this place, Lord, like never before, Lord. And we will forever lift up your name, Lord, on high, Lord. We pray these things in your precious name. Let all the faithful people of God shout. Amen, amen, amen. Give God praise all around the sanctuary as our praise team leads us this morning.
Praise the Lord, everybody. How many need the Lord to walk with them this morning? No matter what you're going through, you just got to ask God to walk with you. While you're on your journey, walk with me, Jesus. While you're going through, walk with me, Jesus.
some praise in the house. Just turn to five neighbor, wave your hand at him and say, neighbor, I need him to walk with me. I need him to talk with me. I need him to guide me. I need him to lift me up. I need him to be with me in the morning. I need him in the afternoon. Stand quiet. Come on, stand on your feet and join with us in this. Come on, put your hands together. Stand quiet. Come on, daughter. I need you to walk. I need you to walk. in the house. This ain't nobody but the Holy Spirit that is in this place. Those of you who are looking online, you need to come inside and feel what we're feeling on the inside. Though I know it's going to the outside. Sis said, I need you to walk with me. You looking at her like she's crazy. You don't know what she's been through. If you knew what she's been through, if you know what she's been through, if you know what he's been through, you would say, go on and tell it anyhow. I've been through the storm. 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 And some of us are still in the storm. Amen. Give them a great big hand praise. Amen. If you go to your seat. Amen. Praise God for this marvelous, marvelous choir today. Amen. Well, things look a little different in here, doesn't it? Amen. Things are changing in Mount Zion every day. And we made a little shift, and we're getting ready for our Easter program for our children. And so uh, we have changed things around. You're welcome to sit up front on the back side or wherever you want to find yourself a seat. You're welcome to sit anywhere in this front area. I know you thought that that was reserved. It is reserved for you. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it is reserved for you. And so you can join us. We're doing many things here at Mount Zion, and we're getting ready for Easter. We want to have a great Easter program, especially while we have this time of the post-pandemic, if you will. And we're believing that God is going to bless us on Easter Sunday morning. Say Easter Sunday morning. And we're going to have areas on the side and areas on the other side and the other areas so it won't be so packed that you will not be comfortable we're going to remain in this kind of vein for the rest of this year and we're hoping that all of our men say all of our men all of our men just stand up very softly all of our men just stand up let's give all of our men all males stand up now we want to keep these men and these males alive say alive and we want to keep them healthy say healthy we have discovered that there are certain health issues that are affecting especially African-American men. And so I want every man to go and get a free checkup. There'd be, there's about, it costs about $3,200 or so, but it doesn't cost you a dime because it's going to be free with the uh, Metro Health Hospital. Give 
God a great big hand praise for Metro Health Hospital. And I want you to pick up one of those flyers in the four years, men and ladies, I want you to pick up a flyer and I want you to give it to any man. He can be black, white, uh, male, and uh, there's going to be a men's fair through Metro Health Hospital the 26th, 26th of April. And Dr. Modlin will be leading that effort. And so we want you to go not to Cleveland Clinic this year. He's moved to Metro Health. And so we're going to be doing it at Metro Health. Let's give God a great big hand praise for that. You can go to your seat. And also you who will have relatives and loved ones or you who are suffering from Alzheimer's, there's information back there on the Alzheimer uh, disease. We want you to go there. Today is the day of purple. Those of you who are not registered to vote, we need you to vote. Say vote. And if there's ever time, I know it's a little warm in here, get cool in here in a minute, but if there's ever time you need to vote, you need to vote now. Right now is the time to begin registering. You only got a couple more days before the voting registration is out, and there, there's some information uh, in the back of the church for that. Uh, and we want to thank all of you who were working with us for the business um, uh, Freedom Conference that Pastor Larry did. There's articles in the papers on that Freedom Conference, and you might be surprised. Your picture is maybe in there. There's a whole page on the Freedom Conference that was held this year. And if you were smart, you would go back and review some of those YouTube tapes as well. We're going to ask that our technicians will now give to us our announcements. Amen. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's hot in here, but it's hot with the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are in this together, executing a strategy to fight for our families. This year, we want to see families owning homes, starting businesses, and growing. During this pandemic, there has been enemies over the home, like addiction, divorce, and mental health issues. We want to help people rebuild foundations. Join us as we explore our series entitled, Fighting the War for Your Family. We're creating our own Mount Zion Wall Street with kingdom business leaders. If you own a business or if you're interested in starting a business, we want you to sign up for this ministry. It will include trainings, online events, and resources. We will also highlight your business or vision so others can support you. Sign up in the foyer or visit our website. Throughout April, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. The first Sunday is Holy Communion with Dr. Macon. The second Sunday, we celebrate Palm Sunday, where we commemorate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Then on Holy Week, join us for the Holy Week experience, including a special hour of fellowship and biblical exploration with Pastor Larry on Tuesday, April 12th at noon. Then Friday, watch our online Good Friday service. Then it's the main event, Resurrection Sunday. We are asking everyone to bring their family and invite a friend. For our students, we have a special Jesus drop-in Easter egg hunt party. This year, children can submit their Easter speeches to be shown to the church congregation. Do this by contacting the church or your children and youth church teacher. We thank all of those who are part of the vision of Mount Zion Oakwood Village. If you attend church, tithe, volunteer, support, and share who we are to others, you are a partner in all that we do. Our 20-year vision is now available online on our website. Also, limited booklets will be available on Easter Sunday. Learn who we are, what we want to accomplish, and how we will make an impact together. We encourage all to participate in our Vision 2042 special offering. Support this vision by giving a one-time financial gift on Easter Sunday of 200, 500, 1,000, 5,000, or more above and beyond your regular giving. We will pray a special blessing over these gifts on Resurrection Sunday. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Well, amen. Give God praise for all the great things going on here at Mount Zion. It's a beautiful time. It's a great time of the year, Resurrection Sunday, as we prepare for that with our young people. Uh, it's a beautiful time of the year being April. I know if you're like me, you woke up this morning and looked outside and said, my God, look at all that snow out there. 
But it was, it was oddly a pleasant drive to church this morning because it looked beautiful. Did anybody see that? We got to praise God for that. It may be snowing, but it, it looks beautiful out there. Well, amen. How many cheerful givers do I have in the house this morning? Do I have any cheerful givers in the house this morning? You know, we say it all the time, and we read our scripture on Malachi 3, 6 through 12, and we say, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, when I read that scripture, you know, I don't look at the cheerful and giver, giver as something separate, like something you have to work towards. Like, okay, I'm giving. I need to work to be cheerful. But I believe when someone discovers the, the, the joy of giving, they are just cheerful people. They're just cheerful people. I haven't met a generous person that's just a mean person. But you discover that there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a joy in giving. Generosity brings God's blessings. And sometimes when I lead our, our uh, tithe and offering time, I just like to read some scripture just about how generosity brings blessings. And you can look in the scripture and you can find hundreds, hundreds of scriptures that teach us about giving and blessing. Proverbs teaches that generous people will be blessed. Will be blessed. Deuteronomy, give generously, then because of this, God will bless you in all your work and everything you put your hands to. Second Corinthians, God loves the one who gives gladly, and God will make it up to you by giving you everything, say everything, everything you need, and more so that there will not only be enough for your own needs, but plenty left over to give joyfully to others. That's the kind of God we're giving to today. We're giving by faith, knowing that God has some great things in store. What are you praying for? What are you believing for? Today you are planting a seed through that. And as you've had witnesses today of people that have given cheerfully, they have discovered the joy of generosity, the joy of giving to God, and the joy of what God can do. Amen, do I have a witness in the house this morning? Well, amen. Let us all stand as we get ready to give this morning. And we turn to our giving passage of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. And we are going to read this passage together. And today we're celebrating. This is first Sunday. So it's communion Sunday. Amen. So today as you give and you walk around, make sure you pick up your communion as we will take that together collectively. And even if you have given online, make sure you come around to collect your communion so we could do communion together this morning. Our giving passage of Malachi 3, 6 through 12, and we are going to read that responsibly. All right. So it says, for I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. And you said? Then he asks, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have he robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And twelve together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be the lightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us pray over this offering and tithe together. If you have your offering and tithe, if you could just lift it up to the sky as if you're giving it straight to God. If you gave online, you can lift your phone up or you could just lift your hand up to the heavenlies this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the joy in giving, Father, Lord. For we know that we're giving to something much greater, Father, Lord greater than ourselves, Father Lord. We are grateful, Father Lord, for the faithful people of God, Lord, that have committed to giving to you, the cheerful givers today, that will experience and have experienced the joy in giving to you, the blessing that comes from it, Father Lord. For we are walking with you, Father Lord, today, Father Lord. 
Be with the faithful people. Bless them, Father Lord. Hear their prayer, Lord, as they plant this seed. Lord, I believe that it's going to come back, Father Lord, to them and something much greater, Father Lord, in their lives, Father Lord. Bless this offering, Lord. Bless this tithe, Lord. Bless this house where we're giving to, Father Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. We pray these things in your precious name. Let all the faithful people of God say, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. You may come, come around, and make sure you pick up your communion on the way. Even now we love the Lord. He heard our cry, pitied every groan, long as we live where trouble rise. We'll hasten to his throne. I love you. Just tell God how much you love him right now. He loved you so much that he died on the cross for you. He loved you so much that he went to Calvary for you. He loved you so much until he could not figure out how else could he restore the relationship with you. And what did he do? The historian said he came down 42 long generations. Started way back there in the Old Testament. But even before that, the Bible said before the foundation of the world, he was slain. Even before time began, he already knew what he was going to do because he loved you. And all he wants you to do is to return the love back to him. 
accept the fact that he made the supreme penalty, paid the supreme penalty for your sins. Believe that he died on the cross, was buried and resurrected from the grave. And those of you who are looking on me right now from the outside, you can pray this prayer of confession. Will you all say this together? Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to the earth and dying on Calvary for my sins. Thank you, God, for delivering him up as a supreme sacrifice for my sins. God, I accept your son Jesus in my heart. I believe that his Holy Spirit is now indwelling me. So now, God, fill me up on the inside with the joy of my salvation. And I'm believing that right now, not only for myself, but also for my community and my world. Shift this world and change it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, as you open your receptacles up, the Bible says on the night in which he was betrayed, he did a very unusual act. And the text says, Judas was not there with him, that he had already committed the devastating act of betraying him. And Judas was gone. Jesus still would have observed the Lord's Supper had Judas remained in the room. But the text said that Judas was not there. And on the night in which he was betrayed, he took the common loaf of bread that was there. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to them. Eternal God, our Father, we ask that you will bless this bread. And that you will remind us in our mind, heart, and spirit that it represents one of the greatest, the greatest gift and sacrifice of humanity which was your body that was shed for the remission of sin we take we eat as your disciples did in remembrance of you until you come again let us eat together and then he took the cup that was there on the table representing his precious blood he blessed it he gave it to them and said as often as you do this do it in the remembrance of me let us drink together. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Just wave at your neighbor next to you as if to say, We're brothers and sisters now by the blood of Jesus. Amen. You may go to your seat as we turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. I'm a little closer to you so you can't hide from me today. Amen, somebody. We're getting bigger, but we're getting smaller at the same time. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. The fifth chapter of Matthew, the 38th verse, a marvelous text. The fifth chapter of Matthew, the 38th verse. Amen. If you have your Bible, say amen. If you need a Bible, say, help me, Jesus. Amen. Nobody's going to say that. Repeat after me. Ye, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, I do not, do not resist an evil person. Do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other cheek. And if someone wants to sue you, take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go to one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard, say you have heard, that it was said, an eye for an eye and two for a tooth. But I tell you, 
Do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, when someone slaps you, turn the other cheek. Now turn back to your neighbor and say, neighbor, can you really do that? In 1963, there was what we call a shot that was heard around the entire nation. And it was John F. Kennedy who was shot in Dallas, Texas. And most of us remember where we were when the announcement came that the president is not only shot, but a few minutes later it came forth, Walt Conkright, that he has now died. But then there's a whole lot of us We'll remember where we were last Sunday during the Academy of War and the giving out of Oscars, especially towards the end of the wars. I have to admit, I was sitting there watching TV with my sweetheart. Turn to your neighbor and say, you know who that is. Don't act like you don't know who she is. You get us all in trouble. But the truth of the matter is that we were sitting there watching the award ceremony and we were, in, we were shocked at what we saw. In, in fact, Ms. Macon was so shocked that she refused to rewind what we saw. And I almost got a little violent. No, I didn't. But the truth of the matter is, I said there, turn back, turn back. She said, no, 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 I'm not going to turn back. I don't know. I don't want to see what I just saw. And here is Will Smith, who gets up out of his seat and walks up to the stage and slaps. Y'all got that photo? And, and slaps Chris Rock. Rock. And my immediate response was, I was embarrassed as a man being with a woman. And then secondly, I was embarrassed for all men in the world, especially black men. And I said to myself, here we go again. They're going to say that all black males are violent. Here they go again. They're going to say that you cannot do anything for black men because they are act up every time. Here we go again. Black men need to be in jail. And, and I was deeply perplexed and hurt by what I saw until I realized that it could be rewind and reviewed worldwide, that it was only in the nation's network that they had frozen that particular scene. I was, in, I, was, I was perplexed, I was hurt, I was confused. But I said to myself, like in the case of John F. Kennedy's death, I know where I was, was at when that happened. Like in the case of Martin Luther King's assassination, I know where I was at. I said, I'll never forget. In, in fact, I wanted to call the broadcaster. I wanted to call those who had created the program and sue them because I was traumatized. How many of you were traumatized? Not very many of you. That means you're all right with that. <laughs> I'm going to talk to uh, Terrence. They won't, they won't talk to me, Terrence, and be honest. <laughs> Three thoughts came to my mind. and You might want to write this down. I asked myself the question, does two wrongs make a right? Does two wrongs make a right? Do you right situations after two wrongs? The truth of the matter is, it is Will Smith and Jada who had been insulted by Chris Rock six years earlier, 2016, where he also tells an uncommonly kind of joke about Will Smith and Jada. And here it is now, six years later, fast forward at 2022, and Chris Rock comes on the stage again and insults Will Smith jokes about him, but insults him by insulting and, if you will, assaulting his wife. 
And I ask myself the question, does two wrongs make a right? And how do you deal with people who wrong you? The first thing you do not do is wait six years later and have all of that anger and frustration and disappointment and relational breakage to occur six years without at least approaching the person earlier. Especially if you declare yourself a Christian as Will Smith was purporting when he was given his acceptance speech using, in essence, the Christian principles about himself on this idea of love and protection and care. Uh, he, he should have understood that you do not allow things to brew in your life, in your family, in your relationships for six long years without addressing it because you would understand what Matthew talks about in the book of Matthew that if, if someone has offended you, you don't even go to sleep at night without addressing that person and saying to that person, I have been offended. The Bible says if someone has offended you, Will Smith, you go to the person and, and, and you address the issue. And, and then if you address the issue then, you don't have to wait six years later hoping that a Denzel Washington will intercede for you. You should have had Denzel Washington to intercede for you if you couldn't handle uh, your disappointment and your anger, your frustration and your of being offended six years earlier. You should have called Denzel Washington if Chris Rock would not have listened to you. Have I got a witness in the house? Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's Bible. I made a, I made a promise to Miss Macon when I first married her some 42, 43 years uh, early. I said, we're never going to bed without writing what is wrong. If I've hurt you, if, if you've hurt me, if we've got a disagreement, and God knows in 43 years, don't look at me like I'm the only one, you are going to have some problems and some issues in your marriage. Everybody is not going to agree with you except for a few of you. Everybody ain't going to agree with you even in a marriage relationship. And so does, does two wrongs make a right? Does two wrongs suggest that you now can go to the person and it's okay to slap them? And that slap becomes not the shot that went around the world, but the slap that went around the entire globe. And then I ask myself a second question. Is there times in essence that violence is okay? Is there times that violence is okay? And was that the time to be violent? And what message does that send uh, to young people in the world, you know, that you can be violent? Just think about, about this. If you can be violent and slap another man, certainly it's okay to slap a woman. Look at, you, look at somebody and say, that ain't right. No, no, it's not okay to get violent in our world. Violent is never accepted. And, and I personally think that he should have just walked out after he committed to crime, because he need to do some time. Oh, y'all know, y'all know, I know how y'all about folk like that, but the truth of the matter is, the brother was violent. If that had been you and me, brothers, we should have just put our hands behind us and tell him, put the cuffs on right now. We're ready to go right now. But somehow, there's some people in this country who seem to be above the law. So violent is never to be accepted in relationship. If you got a problem with a friend and he has insulted you, then you need to go to that friend and you need to say to him. In fact, the Bible says before you give your tithe, don't give it until you go and straighten out some situations in your life. The, the third thing I thought about was this, this statement he says. He says, I am a, I am called by God to be a vessel of love. I am called by God, I am called by God to be a vessel of love. How are you called by God to be a vessel of love? Only to be a vessel of love in a family relationship. No, no, the Bible says in the book of Genesis that we are our brothers and sisters keeper. Have I got a witness in the house? 
we are our brothers and sisters keeper God holds us responsible especially when we find ourselves traveling down the Jericho Road and there happens to be a Samaritan who has had a problem and was not a part of the Jewish family the Bible says that it is not the Jewish folk that help out the Samaritan but rather it is uh, that help out the Jewish brother it is a Samaritan an outcast who helps out a Jewish brother I, I, I'm here to tell you in essence that we're called to be our brothers and sisters keeper and so it's not just about our family because all of us are part of the family of God and and the Bible says we even have a special relationship when we're tied inside of the household of faith we're not only a part of the human family but we're also a part of the Christian family and if someone in the Christian family offends you you ought to go to them and straighten it out if you're going Going to be a vessel of love don't just be a vessel of love inside of the house be a vessel of love on the outside of the house have I got a witness in the house everywhere I go I am a vessel of love okay y'all not gonna listen to me y'all went to sleep and said everything was okay uh, so who is a hero in this story between uh, Will Smith and Chris who? Chris Rock ends up being the hero. Why? Because he gets slapped. Now I know he wanted to respond because if you look at the video picture of him, he has his hand cuffed as if he wants to hit him back when he falls back. But no, no, he does not hit him back. In essence, what he does is he turns the other cheek and turns around and continues with the program as if nothing had happened. And everybody is talking about Chris Rock, the hero. In fact, he got incentivized for not responding the way most of us would have responded. His shows are sold out. And when it comes to Cleveland, if it doesn't use too much of bad language, I might even show up for that show. I like to look at heroes, how about you? The Bible says he's now a hero and, and who, is, who, is, who is the bad guy? The bad guy is Will Smith because he does apologize, but the Bible says go to the one that you have offended and tell them what you've done wrong and tell them that you're ashamed of it and tell them that you wish it never happened. Go to them. It didn't say put it on Facebook or Zoom or anything else or, or use the newspaper. It says go to them. You go to them. And Chris Rock has yet to go to him as far as we know. The Bible says turn the other cheek. Bring me down. I'm ready to go home now. The slap that was heard around the globe very softly the slap that was heard around the globe was not Chris Rock's slap the slap that went around the globe was the slap that Jesus took turn your Bibles to Isaiah the 50th chapter Isaiah 50. Marvelous, marvelous text. Verse 6. What happened to Jesus? He comes to earth. He tabernacles with us 33 and a half years. He comes by way of Bethlehem. But his ultimate purpose was not to come by way of Bethlehem. His ultimate purpose was to come by way of Jerusalem, Calvary. He who knew no sin becomes sin for us. He who is just as much human as we are, yet he is just as much God as if God is, knowing that God is. And the text says that he took the ultimate slap for us. And then we're going to look at 53rd chapter for just a moment. Here's what he says in just this one verse 
I have offered my back to those who beat me. Jesus says, I offer. Isaiah looks into the tunnel of time forward and he says, here's Jesus on Calvary. And Jesus is saying, I offered my back to those who beat me. The soldiers beat him, scorched him with canine tail and his back is like raw meat. He says, I offered my back to those who beat me. He said, I offered my cheeks. I offered my cheeks. The soldier smacked him, hit him with their fist, beating. And the text says, Jesus says, I gave my cheeks to those who did not only beat me, but also pulled out my beard. Now, ladies, you might not understand this, but anybody who has a beard understand what it means if somebody tries to pull out every thread of hair out of your beard. They're not being meticulous. They beat him, they slap him, they scourge him, and then they start to pull it out with their own hands. Their beard. Can you imagine the kind of pain and suffering that he suffered with that kind of of humiliation he says my I gave my cheeks to those who poured out my beard I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting now go to the 53rd Psalm my favorite Psalm and we'll just read it and we'll call it a day Isaiah says who hath believed our report and to whom hath the arm of the Lord being revealed. He grew up before him like a tender shoot, Jesus, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. When we looked at him after he was beaten, after he was scourged, after his beard was pulled out, after the thorns were placed in his head, after blood was rolling down his forehead and down his face, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. We would not even want him. Look at what he says in verse 3. Repeat after me. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. We didn't see nothing in him. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced, he was bruised for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. Turn the other cheek. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearer, he is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For we was, he was cut off from the land of the living, and tra for the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. That was the slap that was heard across the whole world and across the globe. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him with the slap. And he turned the other cheek. And they put him in the grave. And he dies for us. And he lays there for three days and three nights. You know the story. But great God, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in the palm of his hand. Come on, stand on your feet and give the man who took the greatest slap across the entire universe. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God, tell God that the greatest slap heard was not Will Smith slapping 
Chris Rock. But the greatest slap that was taken for us, we had committed sin, we had committed evils, we had committed wrongdoing, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. But with his slap, we are now healed. God, I thank you for loving us so much that you took a slap for us. The worst slap in humanity. Give God some praise. We say today, thank you. Because that slap should have been a slap to us. We were wrong. We were evil. We did things that we ought not to have done. We transgressed your law. We did not remain faithful and honorable to our God at times in our lives. And, and somehow we could not pay the debt for what we had done. But thank God that your son Jesus Christ took the way of the cross for us. Thank God that he died for us. Now, God, as we walk this path of life, we are going to walk it courageously as your son walked his path courageously. And we're going to believe that you're going to make things all right. And somehow, even in the midst of rough times and rough days, we, we know that you will make everything all right. God, even in the midst of what we saw last Sunday, we know that Will Smith can be redeemed. We know that he can turn from his ways. We know he can acknowledge his sin even before the person that he had sinned against God. And we believe right now that his children can be better, that his wife can be better, that out of all of this, all things can work together for the good to them who love God and who are called according to his purpose. And even for Brother Chris Rock, God, I pray, oh God, that you will let him know to be ready for the apology that is necessary and needed, that the relationship might be straightened out and squared, God. And we pray that one day these two brothers and these sisters can walk together as families and say, in spite of what has happened in the past, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. God, I pray for those who have accepted violence and have said, it was all right what he did. I would have done the same thing. But God... I pray that you will look beyond all of our faults and see our needs. And we need you more than ever in a world like this. And we're believing it in the name of Jesus. As you continue in your personal prayers, eternal God, talk to God right now. We thank all of those, those of you who are looking at us online. We hope that you have heard this marvelous message that was given to us by God. The slap heard around the planet, the world, and the earth is the slap that Jesus Christ took for you. And all you have to do is accept the fact that you should have been slapped instead of Jesus, but Jesus moved, if you will, you, the Chris Rocks of the world, out of the way, and he jumped between you and Will Smith, and he took the slap for you. And so now you can walk together in victory and success. We would love to have you here as a member of our church. If you're here today, you have not accepted Christ, or this been if this is the first time, would you lift up your hand or you don't have a church home? Would you lift up your hand if you're inside of the church, you don't have a church home? Praise God, praise God, praise God. If you want to unite with our family, we won't call you up today. All you have to do is fill out that card that's right there in front of your chair rack and give it to an usher as you go out, and they will receive that card, and we will call you next week and let you know how you can walk as the children of God. Amen. Give God a great big hand praise. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and give him that one wave with your hand. Amen. Look at him and say, I love you so much. Look at somebody and tell him, I love you so much. Say, I would never slap you even though you deserve one. Amen. Consider yourself dismissed. We're grateful to God for your being here today. Y'all have a great day. Don't forget to bring your children. Sign up. No, never, 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 no, never,